Hey, what's going on everybody? So Apple just released macOS Big Sur 11.3. So another decent size update here to Big Sur. Always nice to see. There's a whole lot of changes here in this latest update. So we're gonna go through all the changes here in the release notes and then we'll show you a few things that Apple did not mention. So first things first, go ahead and get it out of the way. We now have AirTags support here in Big Sur. So you can now head into your Find My app when your AirTags uh, come out later this week and you'll be able to uh, see them where they are and you'll also be able to track third party items. So that is another thing uh, that they're adding. But yeah, your AirTags are now supported all across all of your Apple devices. Now there were a few things here to do specifically with the new M1 Max. So a lot of new optimization and changes here uh, for things on your M1 Mac. Now I'm actually on a Intel based Mac so I can't really show you this stuff but I can quickly tell you about it here. You can obviously run iPhone and iPad apps on the M1 Max. So you can now change the size of the window to whatever you want, so resize it, do whatever. And also you now have the ability to go to the highest resolution in full screen. So you can actually full screen iPhone apps and it will adjust accordingly. There's also been keyboard support added for games on your iPhone or iPad that you're running on your Mac that use device tilt. And you can also go into the preferences. So, you know, you go up to whatever app you're in, you click there and then you hit preferences. You can go in there now and there's a whole bunch of different options for keyboard, mouse and trackpad support and even customization for game controllers. So making iPhone and iPad apps a little bit more customizable and usable here on the M1 Mac. Also with the M1 chip, there is now hibernation support. So this basically allows when your computer goes to sleep, it'll kind of be put into a more power friendly or power efficient state. So that'll be able to even maximize your battery power when you're on standby mode. So just like in iOS and iPadOS, Apple has added over 217 new emojis. So those are all available here in macOS as well. There's literally everything you can think of now. So you should be pretty good on your emojis on all of your devices. If you head over to your system preferences and you go into the Siri section, you now have the Siri voices. So again, same as on your iPhone or iPad, you now have more variety in the voices. So under voice variety, you can choose which kind of accent uh, you want for Siri. And depending on which one you choose, you'll have even more voice options here. So uh, for American, for example, there are four different voices just to kind of add more variety and uniqueness, I guess, to Siri. Well, yeah, you can now customize your voice options here in your system preferences. Now, a lot of the changes that we saw on iOS with the music app are also here in Apple Music on the Mac, of course. So there's a new autoplay uh, feature that allows you to continue playing similar songs automatically. And then also you have the city charts, which are the same thing that we showed on iOS 14.5. And then also there's an all new search function. And then the podcast app is the same way. So if we go into our podcast app, uh, you'll notice pretty much all the same changes that we saw on the iPhone. So you have new podcast show pages, that are redesigned for easier listening. You also have the option now to save and download different episodes and automatically uh, put them into your library. So you can actually access that in your preferences up here. So you can see automatic downloads are right there. And there's a few other uh, settings here that we didn't have before, but there's where your automatic downloads can be found. And then if we take a look, we now have top charts over here and popular categories. Now, these are normal here, but the neat thing is they now appear in the search. So if we go to the search, uh, we see that they're now uh, categories right here. So a lot of changes uh, here, but they're basically the same changes that we saw on the iPhone. If you are a News Plus subscriber, you're going to notice that your News Plus feed has been completely redesigned. Now, again, I'm not a News Plus subscriber, but this will now allow you to uh, quickly be able to find, download, and manage your different 
uh, magazines that you have and also in the news app just like on iPhone we now have a better uh, searching experience so if you just search tech for example you now see that it brings it in topics stories and uh, even channels so makes your searching a little bit more uh, in-depth and easy to use and Safari got some nice changes here as well so your start page so you have this page of course that was added in Safari 14 well if you click down here on the right this is where you can choose what appears on your start page well now you have the ability to customize the order so now we can actually drag and drop these in different places to customize uh, your page exactly how you want it they've also added a lot of new uh, APIs so there's additional web extension APIs so this is going to allow developers to offer extensions that replace uh, new tab pages and then also there's a web speech API so developers will be able to incorporate speech recognition into their web page which will allow for real-time captioning dictation and even voice navigation and then WebM and Vorbis video and audio formats are now supported in Safari as well. There's a few changes here to reminders. So now on your reminders list, which I actually don't have any, but you can actually organize them so you can drag and drop them in the correct order that you would like, kind of how I just showed you in Safari. And also that order will sync across all of your devices. So if you put them in a certain order on your Mac, it'll look like that on your iPhone, iPad, etc. So that's very nice. And also you can now print your reminders list uh, just like you can on your iPhone. Also, like on your iPhone, you now have support for the latest Xbox and PS5 controller. So if you have an Xbox Series X or S or the new PS5, you can use the controllers on your Mac for games. And of course, those controllers will work very well with your iPhone or iPad apps that you run on your M1 Mac. And something interesting that never gets a lot of attention is the About This Mac section. So now if you head over to your Service tab under About This Mac, in case you don't know how to get there, you just click on the Apple logo and you click on About This Mac. But as you can see right here, you're now going to have the ability to see your warranty status and if you have Apple Care Plus coverage in this Service tab. So you have to be signed in with your Apple ID in order to see your Apple Care Plus. Now I don't have Apple Care Plus, I only have the limited warranty and it's definitely letting me know that my coverage is expired. But also you now have the ability uh, to contact support so you can get Apple support if you're having any issues. And you can also check out your paid repairs and service. So this is gonna allow you to actually purchase or enroll in Apple Care Plus on your Mac. So yeah, the service tab here has been completely redesigned, uh, kinda you know, getting you some easier access to things. Now let's talk about the bug fixes real quick before we dive into a few little bonus things here. So uh, first off, uh, the reminders, if you created them with Siri, they may be unintentionally set for early morning hours. That was an issue on iOS as well, so that should be fixed. Also another issue on iOS was the iCloud keychain. Might not turn off if you try to turn it off. And then the AirPods, uh, their audio routing to incorrect device on the de automatic device switching, and your switching notifications may be missing or duplicated. Again, those were two issues on iOS that are now fixed. Now a few Mac specific issues. So if you had an external 4K monitor, there may have been an issue where it was not displaying in full resolution when connected over USB-C. So that should be resolved now. If you had an M1 Mac Mini, there was a problem with the login window not displaying properly after a restart, so that should be good to go. And finally, the Dwell feature may not have worked in accessibility keyboard. So, so those are the bug fixes that they have addressed here in Big Sur 11.3. And last thing here, I promise we'll get to some of the other bonus things here in a second, but uh, security updates, this update, Big Sur 11.3, had a ton, and I mean a ton, of security related items addressed. And also, if you take a look, uh, there's a few other things here as well. So Safari 14.1, 
uh, was updated. Also, if you're on Catalina or Mojave, they pushed out security updates for those two as well. So if you know anybody on those, be sure to update them or let them know, I guess, that, hey, you need to uh, actually do that. But uh, you can actually head over to this website. I'll put it in the description. It's official Apple support page. But you can just kind of scroll through here and you can see that all of these are security related items that they addressed in macOS Big Sur 11.3. So this is quite a few. This is really probably the most I've seen out of all the Big Sur updates. Uh, there was especially a very serious one in here. I can't really find it right now, but basically it was bypassing built in malware protection. So that's pretty serious but yeah a whole lot of security related items fixed here in Big Sur again you can read these uh, for yourself but it's always nice to see these get addressed okay a couple of things here that weren't really mentioned in the release notes so first off if you have HomePod minis and yes I said minis because you can now use them in a stereo pair as an audio device so if I actually had them uh, right here they would appear right here it would say something like you know I could set it to my desk or something like that so office desk you know so you can now do that with your stereo HomePod minis and then finally there is a screensaver that was added that you actually have it but you don't have it it's for the new iMac specifically but if you're on an Intel Mac or an older Mac like I am and you want it, I'm going to show you how to get it real quick. So we head over to our screensaver. You can see that I have it right here. It says hello, and this is what it looks like. And here are the options for it. So you can choose the theme. So you have soft tone, spectrum, and minimal. And then you have show hello in all languages, and you can match your system appearance. So let me give you just a real quick preview of what this looks like. So all it does is write hello across your screen in a whole lot of different colors. And again, this is specific to the new iMac that's coming out. But let me show you real quick how you can actually enable this on your Mac. So all you have to do is head over to your Finder window and you want to go into your Macintosh HD. From there, we're going to head into System and then we'll head into Library. Now when you head in there, you want to scroll down. This should be in alphabetical order. And you should see screensavers right here. So a folder that says screensavers. When you hop in there, you're going to notice that you have your screensavers right here. And you can see this file right here is the new Hello Screensaver. So you have it installed with Big Sur 11.3 but it doesn't appear in system preferences. So to get it to appear in system preferences, what you have to do is you have to copy this file. So uh, you can just right click it or hit Command C. We'll hit copy. And then we wanna paste it to our desktop. So to do that, I just hit Command V or you could right click and hit paste item. But now we have a copy of the screensaver right here. And just to make sure we know that it's a copy, you're going to change the name to hello copy.saver. And now we can open this file up, and yours is going to look a little different. It's going to say, Would you like to install this screensaver? System preferences is going to open up, and it's going to ask you if you want to install it. You hit yes, then you hit or put in your password and it will install the Hello Screensaver. Now again, mine's already in here, but once you do that, you should have the screensaver appearing in your settings. And from there, you can delete this copied file. You don't need it anymore since it is downloaded. But yeah, that's how you uh, can enable the new Hello Screensaver on your Mac that obviously isn't the new iMac. So pretty cool, uh, nice to see. I actually like it. It's definitely something different. Uh, I have two displays, so on the other display, it's actually a completely different color right now. Uh, you can't see that, but I promise you it is. But yeah, just a nice screensaver to go along with the colorful theme of the new iMacs and everything. But yeah, guys, that's all I got for you today. That's macOS Big Sur 11.3. Let me know what your favorite feature is or what you're most happy or excited about, etc. 
But that's all I got for you guys today. Thank you all for watching, supporting the channel, and I will catch you all in the next video.